I've got another guest for you this week, and this time it's the wonderful Diane Beck, who's a former actress who trained at RADA. Now, she had success on stage and screen, and yet realised despite fulfilling her childhood dream, her life was out of alignment. In this episode, we chat about her breakdown and ultimate breakthrough, and how what she discovered about being out of alignment and getting back on track brought her to create the Aligned Life Process and refocus her life to help people like you get your life aligned. Diane shares the three key steps to her process, how to spot if your life is out of alignment, what you can do to start aligning your life today, and a whole lot more. Now, as ever, you can find the show notes and all the links mentioned in this interview at www.beabrilliantheuman.com slash 142. So, grab a cuppa. And let's dive into Are You and Your Life Aligned with Diane Beck. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. If you're looking to improve your life, to heal, to grow and mature as an individual, but maybe you found that some of the personal development and consciousness stuff has given you the impression that you need to be super serious and vigilant to get anywhere meaningful or feeling like maybe you're just not up to snuff. Well, this show is here to remind you of your humanity and in fact that that's where your true joy and brilliance lies. With over 25 years of experience in the transformation biz and having developed MPA, one of the world's simplest pressure-free approaches to growth and well-being, if I do say so myself, I'll be sharing tips, steps and insights that'll help you navigate all the aspects of life as a growth-seeking being. On this show, it comes to you with a good dose of humor, maybe a smattering of colorful language, a reminder not to take things so personally, and most importantly, to be kind to yourself along the way. Make sure you hit that follow button, and let's get into it. Hello, hello. Hello, Diane. Good to see you. Hello. Hello, Joel. Ah. Uh, now uh, I want to introduce Diane. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the bio as I like to do. Read the bio out and make my little comments as we go. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I met Diane not that long ago. Actually, we met at a retreat that both of us were on. It was kind of a business marketing retreat, and yep. um, you know, got to know each other there. Um, went out for a couple of glasses of water and maybe some wine. Uh, <laughs> the whole bunch of us had a good chat between us and. Uh, Diane said, oh, you know, do a podcast. Can I be a guest? And I was like, hell yes. Or either I, maybe I said, you've got to come on the podcast when I heard her talking about what she's up to. No, I, I remember inviting myself, I think. Yeah, I, think you <laughs> I, did. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's like, yeah, look, I want to be on your podcast. I'll come and do something. And I was like, yeah, I'm down for that. If there's some really cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I uh, would like to share it with, uh, you know, with my listeners. So uh, let's go with the bio, right? This is the official bit. Get ready. <clears throat> go for more. so diane beck this is diane right here is the creator of the aligned life process this is what we're going to talk about today she takes people from a life that isn't working from symptoms including overwhelm success but no joy a dependency on substances such as alcohol and overeating or stimulants not feeling on track knowing something just isn't right but feeling pressure to keep going know that one and she brings them back to core. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. Um, in her former life, as an actress, Diane thought that she was aligned. And who wouldn't get in the actor's life, right? But there we are. Uh, but she suffered dreadful anxiety and other symptoms and eventually realized she was not at all aligned. Mm-hmm. Embarked on a journey and finally uncovered who she really was. Her journey inspired her to create the Aligned Life Process and do the work that she does now, including private work, retreats, and masterclasses. Now, Diane's clients release years and layers of emotions, blocks, decisions that cripple them, negative beliefs are limited, and they emerge aligned. Welcome, Diane. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds, yeah. So we've got to start at the beginning. That former life as an actress. I'm going to guess <laughs> okay. a lot of the guests that, that that come on, this is true of most people that I know that end up helping people have some kind of former life. Something inspires them to go, oh, this is a bit shit, and in some form, and then they get moved to look at themselves and then move on. So is, is that what happened? I mean, you said you realized you weren't aligned. Tell us about No, I was, ki- I was kicking 
kicking and screaming out of it because I loved it so much. And um, my since, since I was six, I knew I wanted to do it. I mean, even before I knew what it was. And I was ringing the drama school at, I can't remember, was it seven or eight years old? And the same woman that had humoured me was still the receptionist Val when I went to, it was Rada, and so Rada was like, I'm going there and I'm going to do this and I'm going to, that's all I want to do. And I think I made this decision when I was so young and I knew how to do it. It kind of came naturally. I thought, well, this must be it. This must be what I do then, isn't it? And then so I didn't give any thought to anything else <laughs> other than that focus. And could have gone to uni, didn't, did all the just like, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to do the acting, went and then just put all my eggs in that basket. Loved it. Hated the industry. So absolutely loved it. Had successes, great successes, tons of stage fright and loads of moments that emerged seemingly from nowhere. That was like, what on earth is this? It's like this out of body moment of where I would be on stage and thinking, what, what what am I doing? And I was phoning it in, which is was so not like me. I was so, you know, if I'm going to do anything, it's 100%. So I was trying to give it 100% that had these weird zoop, like zoom out moments. And I thought something's not right. And then I would have the anxiety, which was, did not make any sense to me whatsoever. I was not in the slightest bit spiritual, which I am now. I'm a completely unrecognizable version of myself. <laughs> so, so what I was... And uh, yeah, I had a really bad time. I had a bad few years in my 20s, especially in my early 30s. My gosh, what a whole decade of struggle trying to work out, do I let this thing go? But wow, was I glad. When, I mean, I still do acting and voiceovers, and I just went up for The Crown, the series The Crown. Don't know if you ever come across it. It's some series about the royal family on Netflix. So I still go up for things and still do stuff. But it's for fun. It's like, it's not my career. It's... It's now a, a, the joys back, you know, that I used to have where I would dip into it rather than it being some all-encompassing focus of my life, which was not my life. And I think that's symptomatic of a lot of people. They go into law because their fathers and mothers were lawyers or, or they'll go into something like, you know, and, and they don't realise that's not who they are or we'll make a decision when we're really, really young and we change, we expand and grow, we're, con we're you know, creative beings and we're always changing. And I think I didn't give any room or space for me to grow or expand. I thought I've got to hold on to this thing that I thought I was, you know. I can I can so relate all these guitars behind me because I started playing guitar when I was eight. I've got one here, but I can't play it. I've always been threatened to learn. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody with a guitar. Apart from they look great. You've got some really good That's ones. Some nice there. guitars, but I was going to be a rock star when I was eight years old. That was it. I was going to be a rock star. And again, I did that, followed it, didn't give a shit about school. And work because I was, you know, I was in bands from the age I was eleven. Um, ended up in kind of a punk alternative rock band. We had a couple of singles. We're about to get signed by Sony, and everything came crashing down. Continue with the Oof. music, and then that kind of put me in touch with, um, you know, looking within that, and you know, yep. I was to become first wife, then first ex-wife. Um, oh, the first one the first of many, one, yeah. <laughs> right, so, uh, but basically, you know, that situations with her, and then what was happening in the music industry, which shifted enormously, and then we were kind of cast out, meant that that I was sort of scuppered in that dream. But I find it interesting now with what I do. I mean, there's a there's similarities between the industry we're in now and and the music industry, and probably the acting industry to some degree. Um, in as much as you know, except we don't have business managers in <laughs> in this industry, but but fundamentally, that it's like what, what the things that I would was doing as a music creator is very similar to, in some respects, to what I do as a creator in the world of personal development. Yeah, about the muse and those kind of things. Yeah, um, but. It's channeling, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But it's only take it's it's taken me a long time since I hit that fork in the road where I had to realize I had to make a choice between because I was trying to tr trying to do two careers, um, and oh yes, when you have a leg in each, a leg in that's each. a tricky yeah. time, isn't it? Well, and you're, they're, they're your legs are parting because the the, <laughs> the land is it's shifting. It's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable feeling. There's that Chinese, I think it's Chinese, it's, it's ascribed to loads of people, but that he who chases two hairs catches none. 
Yeah. And I had to make that choice. And my heart was in the end saying, do you know what? I need to go with at the time when MPA came along. It was like, I have to go there. And I think yeah. just yeah. even just in this moment, you talking about your experience, I'm like, yeah, it really was a great idea. And it really wasn't me. And just like you now, I I dip in. It's for fun. Yeah. Um, I still write. Because it's still part of your flow. It's still part of the fabric of who you are. Yeah. It's just not a definition no. anymore. No, no, it's not the it's not the sort of the primary I am in terms of what I'm up to in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's 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 very cool. So so what did you do? I mean, what what happened next? So you got this. Wow. Yeah. I I'm I got to the stage where I was I couldn't leave the house. I was agoraphobic. And I'd had an operation and my whole life had come, come crashing down. And I had an agent at the time. I've, I've still got an agent, but my agent at the time, I said, my gosh, her patience. And I got to the stage where she said, you need to get on. You got to, There was this thing called the Bridge Project at the time, which was like between London and New York. It was really exciting. I thought, oh, the idea of that sounds great, but I can't even get on a bus, let alone a plane. Are you joking? And she just said to me, you need to go see a wise woman. I thought... Give me a wise woman. I don't know where a wise woman is. I've got no idea who I need to talk to or how to sort this out. And I went up and down, you know, Harley Street and tried all of my friends. Like I would get there somehow. And in the end, I, oh my gosh, my my boyfriend at the time, he put up with so much because I had agoraphobia and claustrophobia, which was hilarious. It means you can't go out and you can't stay in. You're going to be panic attacks. Oh so I was an expert panicker, Joel. I was an expert panic attacker. I think I did about three a day at my peak. It was so boring. And I kind of would go to see as many people as I could and nobody was getting near it because what I also didn't realise was that I have this autonomy over my own system. And I thought, so surely someone somewhere will magic this away. Uh, which like a lot of my clients who come see me like magic this away. And I go, you kind of like lead them to what the real, the, the transformation is going to be. But I was like, who's going to do this? Who's going to do this? And finally sort of got in front of this one guy and he gave it to me how it is four hours of, of change. And it was NLP and hypnosis. And I had bits of things that had cracked a little bit that gave me hope. Cause it was, it, I was, I got to a stage where I was so bad. I had to lock myself out of the house and walk to my nearest relative, which was miles away. So I thought, if I don't do this, I'm not coming back from this. It was so bad. And I just walked. And I remember that walk. And it felt like I, had, I was banked by my ancestors. I remember feeling like my grandma's here. And I've got this person here just like banking me. It was so moving. I was like walking from the front door to my mom's house. And I think, I've got to make this journey. I've got to keep on walking miles so that I can. And I was like my own Mount Everest. And people were crossing me on the street, you know, passing me. And I thought, they don't realize I'm, I'm doing Mount Everest right now. <laughs> And they're just passing this woman, having this huge moment. And it was a triumph. And I thought, if I can crack that, I can do anything. And I, that gave me a bit of power back. And then I saw this guy and he was like, you're doing it to yourself, which was very annoying, but very true. <laughs> and then he talked me through a little bit and it began to really, really plant the seed of, can I swear on this show? Is it no sweary? Oh, I've already sworn. So have you? Oh, right. Okay. Because I swear like a navvy. I have to be really careful. And <laughs> like, I can't really change. I don't want to change myself that much. But I did think, fucking hell, I need to change this now. And I, I know that I have the power to change it. Because if I thought somebody else could change it, it also disempowered me a little bit. And it did feel like I needed to find some magician, you know. And in the end, it was the truth. Yeah. And yeah. All, the whole bunch of work then ensued. And then I, I got rid of it enough. I mean, I was layered with things of years. Of, and my father had dropped dead in front of me when I was a kid. So I had all of this trauma I'd buried, you know. So when I started to kind of work on stuff, I was like, wow, I have I can really clear things out for the first time. I don't just have to live with this stuff and bury it. And, and it was utterly, utterly transformative. And there was no coming back from that kind of creative transformation. Is there a going back to playing somebody else in two scenes when I kind of got, got my own drama going on here I'm kind of clearing things out and discovering who I am and oh it was amazing I was learning all this stuff about spirituality I've got I've got a higher self and an unconscious mind what are those things and it was phenomenally fascinating to me 
and now this is my new obsession. You know, I'm looking at all my books and there's only a few playbooks left and they're all, they're all, you know, it's all about spirituality and gnosis and the mind and yeah, love it, love it, love it. Found my calling. So uh, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that as well. Cause when I first did a seminar, I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And a whole, I was, I was a drag along for the first event really. Mm. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go back because that's, there's something in this. So you locked yourself out of the house. Yeah. So here's here's what my take on that in terms of I'm thinking in like for a lot of people, one of the biggest blocks to that transformation is the often underrated kind of willpower in that moment of there's a decision to make and I need to do something different. Was that what it was like for you? Or what was what Yeah, was that no, it was it was dark. It was really dark. Joel so I got to a stage where I thought it's this or it's a choice I'd rather not think about because my life was nothing my life I, I had an amazing career that disappeared and I couldn't do what I loved and I was locked in an awful flat in a relationship that was difficult in a life that wasn't working and my god it was like hell it was living hell and I just thought, if I don't make a change, if I don't put one foot in front of the other, I, I actually don't know what inspired me apart from another panic attack, probably in the shower. And I'm not even being able to close the shower door. Kind of laughing at myself now, but thinking, what if I get stuck? But I mean, it was the ludicrous trains of thought that come from negative beliefs and terror. And I'm thinking, this has to, I know, thinking this has to stop. Mm. And I just, I was, I fuck it. And I put, kept the keys in, shut the door behind me. Thought, well, I can't, I can't now. He's at work, and I can't get in. And I could feel it bubbling. I thought, but I, the only thing I know to do now is go forwards. <gasps> kept on walking, and that's when I felt I've got help. Sounds really sounds like nonsense, but it wasn't. It was like I felt help, you know, energetically. I could feel my grandma there. It was very, very moving. Yeah. Do, do you think that yeah. the uh, under the whole bunch? Of them. Do, do you think that we've got a bit of a lag, haven't we? Here, so we have to work with that. Do you do you think that there was kind of a a symbol? I mean, I see symbology in what you did there: closing the door on your old life, unlocking it, putting the keys yeah. back through, and walking away. Do you do you see that? Because I see that sort of in. I don't know what your take is on this, but rich. I love ritual in as much as it's it's an embodiment of a statement of intent, and it feels like may, maybe at an unconscious level you did it, but that's such a wonderful symbolic experience. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I still get moved. I'm, I'm really moved even every time I talk about it, and I rarely talk about it. But every time I talk about it, I've mentioned it a couple of times recently actually, but I've never really don't really talk about it at all with people. But I get very moved when I think about it and talk about it because it is a ritual. It is. It was very ritualistic, though. It was. It ritual is. You know, you're releasing something. It's sacrifice. You're letting something go, and I was letting go of the fear in that way. There were still layers of it, but my. God, when I got to my mum's house and just burst into elation and tears, she didn't have a clue what I was going on about. <laughs> uh, because neither did people passing me. It's this personal triumph. Yeah. So you 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 kind of made that move, um, an act of supreme empowerment. <laughs> it doesn't seem it, but it really was. No, no I, I get it. You know we often miss do it. Do you know what's time. really interesting, actually? It's, I did um, at Beth at the Royal Shakespeare Company years ago, and we had this guy who came in. He's called um, John Terry. I can't remember his name. John Terry or some, some Terry King. Terry King, very important. He was a very famous fight instructor, and he would he came in to teach us the fighting scenes. I remember we all had to talk about our deepest fears, right? And at that time, I was still suffering from anxiety. This wasn't the the, the really bad lot, you know, can't get out, can't 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 stay in kind of scenario. But I was really bad where I was being I was having stage fright where my actresses actress friends were pinning me down to stop me from running off stage. It got so bad. I was like, it was tedious. Noma Demesson, she's a great actress now. She, she, she was there pinning me down. She, um, Terry King came in and he said, what's your biggest fear? What's your biggest triumph? And this guy was going, you know, I've climbed this mountain and I don't, everyone's going, Woo! and somebody else is going this. And, and I was thinking, all I've got is that I managed to go on the tube the other day and didn't freak out. 
<laughs> like <laughs> that to me as an internal world triumph was enormous. And I could tell my triumph was enormous compared to the guy who was taken up by a team to do, and I'm not disparaging it by any, it sounds like I am, but it was very much like comparatively speaking, I really felt like my days became major struggles just to get through them like a normal person. I th- I think- and that's how my clients are. Don't your clients come to you sometimes and you, they go, you don't understand. And I'm thinking, well, I've got my own version of terror and my own version of that from the past. I kind of have some empathy to it because I've been through horrors, you know. I, and I think that's such a key thing for people to really hear. Anyone on any transformation process is in a place where they don't know what they don't know. They, those little, yeah. those what can seem as you say comparatively tiny little wins are at that point enormous and and it's such a good thing to i really want listener capture this moment and and really hear it because there'll be something in your life where you're on that learning curve where you've been doing something one way and you've made a shift and though and there'll be things that seem petty um insignificant inconsequential if you were to tell them to somebody else and you know yeah. they're enormous for you so go go with that but you can tell when you're talking to a, a client and you can calibrate their emotions and their their meaning it's the emotion behind it because emotions like the it's the throttle behind the dart you know it's the energy behind the dart and you can tell by the way they talk about it how meaningful it is comparatively speaking, somebody else who might say something that they've done, you know, they got up in front of a bunch of people at work and they did a good presentation and that's a win. It's on a different scale. It's public, but it doesn't mean <laughs> it's not huge. You know? And every time somebody gets a huge internal win, they break through. They absolutely break through because the brain loves evidence and you've got this amazing evidence. Yeah. Because you can do presentations or you can do things, you st- and it, the penny might not have dropped at a certain level where the brain gets the evidence it needs. It just means, yeah, I've just done something, and apparently that was quite good, versus you absolutely categorically knowing you've made a crack through something which was yesterday an impossibility. That's huge to the unconscious mind. Yeah, really. They are really. enormous wins. So on to the unconscious mind, I want you to tell us about the aligned life process. Now, I'm guessing... You went on, as you said, you went on a journey to start to discover possibilities, ways of being. At some point, you've you've come up with this aligned life process, which is kind of, um, I'm going to guess, your way of working. Tell us, what what does that mean? Yeah, Yeah, it took a long time to get there because I knew even that, even the, the aligned life process wasn't aligned for a while. So when I started to, you know, clearing out my stuff, I developed a way of working that was an amalgamation of the bits that worked for me. Because I thought, well, there is wasn't a complete system here. I had to go and see lots of different people. And then I kind of worked out, oh, right, so this has to happen and this has to happen. So the aligned life process is, first of all, noticing the symptoms because awareness is king. Yeah. You know, because we're 96% unaware of what we're doing, apparently, or what we're not, you know, 96% <laughs> unaware. I don't know who works this thing out, but um, 96% is is huge lack of awareness. So when it comes into your five to nine awareness, that, that means it's finally moved up the chain of importance and you can look at it. That's really significant. And so when you're aware of what the symptomology is and when you're aware of like what the, you know, somatic sensations you might have or, or that you're just not able to do something and you might believe something which you know isn't working out for you, but you just don't have another way. These symptoms will crop up in your life. And then it's a case of getting to the bottom of it. So to align somebody, it's actually bringing them back to who they really are at the core of them, which is this almost dualistic experience of being in this, this is where it gets into my interpretation of it here, good, Joel. Good. So you have to yep. roll with yep. this. But it's like this avatar that we're in, this physical body, and we have this soul and inner being and higher self, whatever you want to label it as, that's, u- that's utilizing this physical body. And we're having a trip. We're, we're expressing and we're creative beings. We're here to create. <laughs> 
So when you're out of alignment, you're not being who you're meant to be. You're not being creative. You're not attuning to your natural joy, to your natural gifts. And I think joy is the resonance. I think it's 540 on the resonance scale. It's really high. Mm. You know, Dr. Dr. David Hawkins. Yes. um, David, yeah. yeah. And I think 540 on the scale is super, super high. And I think if you're resonating at a really nice high frequency, you're going to be bringing in those things which naturally align to you. Whereas the lower frequencies aren't our natural states. That's the shame, the fear, the negativity. So just so just aligning gonna, is clearing that stuff out. Just to pause there, just to because my listeners may not have heard of Dave, Dr. David Hawkins. I love his, his work. So he mm. were, used um, a form of dowsing effectively. Um, yeah. yeah. And he worked out a logarithmic scale. Yes, I think I literally, as if by magic, I have, have two his, of his books here. Book, yeah. How funny. That's the uh, yeah, the map of human consciousness. Amazing book. So he, he logged out a scale and, and then worked out, a, he called it the scale of integrity. And he said most of the world's below 200, which is really not helpful or healthy. Um, and then he got into like this, the 540, the 500 and different levels. But there is a logarithmic. Yeah. So it's like it, the way I look at that is that the, the, when you raise your awareness, the more you go up that scale and this isn't a kind of a up the scale is you're a better person or a better human being because it's not what we're about here but it's like as you do it's more you get into the more subtleties there are more subtle nuanced distinctions between um what makes that difference than they do down the line but fundamentally you know i agree it's like if your frequency is off you're going to be yeah. Well, if, well you, you've just hit it so there, actually. You talked about awareness. And I think if somebody's below 200, it's because they are asleep. They're sleepwalking. You know, we're in in and out of trance most of the day. Mm. We're in and out of an altered state. So it's when you're not thinking. How many times of the day are we not consciously thinking with intention? Like most of the day, actually. So if somebody's asleep in their stuff and in their years and years of programs it's like i see people like a clean window to clean you know in my line life process it's like you've got years and years of smears of dirt and this and that of ideas and thought forms and beliefs and the emotions that come with it and all of that stuff it obscures you and so it's clearing that away so that you can shine through it and it's true you know when people clear it away they come back to themselves it's not about changing who you are it's about finding who you are not changing you and that actually naturally resonates resonates people at a higher frequency they walk out you you'll have experienced experienced this probably with your work you know because we can't but not when we help people discover what it is that they're holding on to that they need to let go of and sacrifice so that they can elevate up so yes yeah. yeah so core cool. let's go back because i noticed like when i read the bio and the stuff that you put out it's like back to core rather than back to the core is there a thinking behind that? And and specifically, what do you mean by core here? It's like who you really frequency. are. Or, yeah. yeah, who you really are. When you really get into it, I'm talking about energy and frequency. And you'll have a signature. And I think it's it's that. It's who you are. It what It's what makes you you. It's what taps into. It's like you have this well of joy that is totally unique to you. So you'll have times in your life where you've experienced it. And it could be that time when you said that thing to that person and you saw the light in their eyes go on and you had this flutter of this frequency. It's like those are your signature of who you are and when you are aligned to who you are. And it's actually being brave enough to be that more consistently yeah. because it's actually easier to fall back on the old programs, which aren't you. So like in non-personal awareness, it's like we say that's me that when it isn't. <laughs> the non-personal frequency <laughs> is a very high frequency on that scale it, it, because it allows you to to get beyond the self, which is, I guess, in your language, the not core self. But I really like your definition because it, it's always a slight caution, not caution, a worry in me in the language of our industry because there are a lot of not very helpful definitions around these things. So what you because yeah. people say, oh, who you really are, and they, then they go to some picture in their mind of what that's supposed to be and those kind of things, which from my perspective and what you've just said is very different. You really are coming back to, a, it is a discovery of 
and it's not something that you can slap a label on and just go it's this or it's that it's like it, it's it's a what did you say something about a consistent thread something like that yeah it's like those moments when you're alive when when you feel the free son and the energy of joy it's those higher frequencies that make you kind of go it's those moments when you go oh and you you're in it you're kind of you're clicked in it's like being clicked into who you are some people would call that purpose in their language yeah you know or i but i it's very much about energy and frequency and it does become, you can label it, I think, because if you have an awareness of it, you can get to the stage where you can go, I know when I'm there and when I'm not, which is also really important. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that is, that's true. And I think maybe you could define that as a label. I guess I was pointing to the kind of, oh, it's like you say, it could be joy. Like my experience is at times or for a periods, I might have the label joy, which points to that experience, which then might shift later in life. It's the same essence, but my language might shift around it. That's because I was pointing to that. You can revivify it. You can go back and revivify it, and the frequency is always there. Yeah, that that's it's because that's, that's that's the useful bit. Because every time you look back on something retrospectively, you're back through a different lens anyway, and so the lens will always always be retrospective. So it's going to feel differently. However, you look at something matches the, the, the neurology's got a match with the feeling, isn't it? So, I think if you're if you drop in and revivify it, you'll notice those moments when you've had those joy bits, those joy essences, and you'll have it in your day to day. But you've got to be present. People can't be clicked in if they're not present. So also part of the process is teaching people how to be associated and present and being okay with it. So you've which is scary for some people because they've got a lot of stuff going on. So it's a healing process and a rediscovery of who they are, the, this amazing core level, which is always positive and the unconscious always loves it. Mm. And it's aligning them forwards with teaching them how to cast that out to create a future they want. So it's three stages. So it's kind of awareness is king, love that. Then it's coming back to the core. Yeah, the the healing what is, needs to be healed yeah. and then casting out to Cut. and now what do I want? Because most people are terrified of that question. It's like, well, you're a creative being. That's what we're here to do. And if we're here to create. What do, you, what do you want? Yeah, I think um, I may have even done a whole blog on, uh, or I think I did a blog, but I've also done a whole podcast on that question. I think it's one of those powerful questions that people are afraid to really ask. We can ask it in that kind of, what do I want? Uh but like a really deep question of what do I actually really want is, is I found a way to get people there, Joel. And this is what I, I, I I've found it. it took me ages, like 12 years in it. I found it about a year ago and I made, um, I made people, I, in fact, I could probably give you the link to it for anybody who's listening to this. They can have it. It's like a joy meditation, but it gets them to the frequency. Cause I think when it's hard to know what you want, when you're in one of the lower frequencies, they're like, basically the trick is, get to a higher frequency and you can feel it see it so the joy meditation elevates people up to a higher level of consciousness and a higher level of mind i get them to you know bring their higher self and their unconscious in and then work with a field of joy like a like an um, energy field of joy and then be shown what you want yeah and then you can start to look out in the world what do i want but being shown what you want from your inner being is a whole other animal. It's it's not about what other people tell you what you should have. It's a hard thing to break away from. Yeah, and I want to. I do want to pause a moment now, listener. Pay attention. This is really, really important. There's a big difference. We talked about nuances between answering that question from a a picture, an idea, someone else's idea, just basically from an out of aligned place. There's so much yeah, of the yeah. manifesting stuff that I see where people think they're, manif they're manifesting from a place that isn't aligned, that the cogs aren't together, you haven't got the leverage. That piece there that you just pointed to, which is like um, having the question almost like given to you from that deeper place, from yeah, the soul, connected place, from the core, whatever you want to call it, yeah. from, from the connected place is a whole other thing. I often yeah, say yeah. the real trick, the magic uh you know the most magical prayer is praying for what's already becoming it's like that's that means you are listening to the the ultimate evolution it's like it's like that's paying attention in, in mpa we call it animation 
It's like what is what is what is being moved through you. That's from my perspective. That's your core, as you would say, speaking to you. And if yeah. you pick up on it, everything falls into place. And you become like a master manifester. Is that kind of similar to what you? Yeah, yeah, you're on. Yeah, your inner being, higher self, whatever you want to label it, the inner you, the core of who you really are, through this avatar, this amazing body. And I, the reason why I know that, I want to pause in a moment and say this is how I fundamentally know this. Go back to that point. You know, I said like my dad died in front of me. Yeah. I remember the moment though of thinking he's not there like he's he the physical body's there but he's not and it was sounds so obvious but when i actually saw it for real, for real there and then not there he'd left i was like this really is like taking a coat off it really is just a physical thing and he's definitely still here but he's not there yeah that's quite um, a visceral it's experience. a phenomenal eye opener yeah so i think when you're thinking about connecting to who you are it's not this we're just using this to create in this dimension it gets super weird doesn't it but it is it's in this density we're, cre we're creating it's fun yeah but we're creating at this level so we're creating moment to moment to moment but you're going to create from the energy that you're spinning at right now, the level that you're resonating at. So do you want to be pulling in stuff which is going to be giving you joy or stuff that's going to be perpetuating shame? Or do you want to be bringing stuff in that's going to be bringing you excitement and momentum or stuff that's going to be dragging you down, i.e. yesterday or last year, that thing that happened? You know, So it's learning also not just about awareness, but how to shift into a neutral place so that you can move forwards and not be dragged by the past you know that stuff's got to be cleared out before you goal set or you're just gonna usually people just cut themselves off at the knees and keep thinking about the past or regrets or for goal setting and manifesting the sponsoring energy as we like we're talking about in the bar is um, i think that was, was it he was that amazing comment from uh, conversations with god when he talked about the sponsoring energy that comment really stayed with me but it's very brilliant way of putting it but it's the the energy behind the arrow if that negative energy is negative it doesn't matter what you're putting on the front end of it the energy behind it is what will manifest the reaction and the you know the reflection back at you that stuff's got to clear out for amazing manifestation yeah personally it, from what i've seen it, it's core to a lot of the non-personal stuff is the what's the sponsoring energy it's like you've got to get clear on that stuff so we're, we're yeah, yeah. racing through the time here, uh, having this conversation. I've got a couple of questions for you. Again, so listeners probably going, okay, so am I? is my life aligned? How would I know? Um, because that's what the mind will often do. How would someone recognize if, if they've got an alignment issue? Okay, so you've got to ask yourself, um, am, I where I want to, am I where I want to be in my life? If the answer to that is yes, great. And then you go in and check on yourself as to how you feel. Yeah. If the answer to that is no, then you go inside and you check on yourself on, uh, do I dare notice how I feel? <laughs> Again, catch that. Do I dare notice how I feel? To me, that would be like a red, if the answer is no, I'm actually afraid. That's it instantly be going to be with. a red a red flag that you. That's why you got to let yourself off the hook a little bit because it's going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, on this show, it's called a beer brewing human because I love to really focus on. There's so much potential and possibility, but we are human in the process. That let yourself. Isn't that great though. Yourself. That's what makes us amazing I, and so I, brilliantly creating. Yeah, we're creating yeah. all of it, all the misery. Isn't that brilliant <laughs> that we can? So, but it is. You've got to laugh. It's like every, we're creating everything. Like I very recently had a concussion. I was telling you about before. Yeah. Start recording. Like I fell off an assault course, and I could completely manifested it. I kind of worked further back upstream and thought, "What did I do? Oh, I was dreading it." And I was already looking at thinking, "There's an accident waiting to happen." And then the guy was who was running it said, "Nobody sue us if somebody falls off." So all of the <laughs> seeds had been planted, you know. And then, of course, I I did what I did. I thought I created this, not what I would have wanted to consciously create, but my negative emotions. I give myself credit for all of it, you know. And so unfortunately, if you're looking into your life and going, 
my marriage is suffering or my relationship is really, really tight and struggling or something's not right or I've got tons of emotions about my colleagues at work or something that's happened. There's, if it's pulling you away from peace and joy, it's something worth looking at. It's really difficult to do it on your own. I have to be honest. The only thing that you have to know about is do I have symptoms, which I'm not happy with? Yeah. The answer to that is yes. And the typical ones I noticed from clients is they'd have successful lives on paper and underneath the hood, it was a mess and it was overwhelm and long hours, three glasses of wine creeping up to, especially during lockdown as it happens, that was a you know, commonality now and, and just habits, which weren't them. They would say, this is not me. When you start saying that this is not usually me, well, then, you know, you're out of alignment, but anything that is showing up as um, a crutch so, and life will get, it'll get thinner and thinner and thinner until you can't get any thinner. It's just going to snap, you know? So what do you, what do you do then? I mean, again, someone might go, Oh God, I recognize that. What, what are they? What's the best thing they can do to support themselves? Obviously, I'm going to recommend yeah. they get help, just as you do, and certainly you're a great person to go. But what's if they're like, okay, what do I do in this when I recognise this? Oh my gosh! So you go and come back to the physical body, actually, mm. before you go to the other bodies. You come back and you breathe and you stop, and you get present. Because when we're out of alignment, we're chasing, we're time traveling, we're never in the moment. You're always thinking about what's going to happen or thinking about what has. You're not present. So taking time out to just stop and breathe and learning just a simple, but these are the miniature wins, like the breathing exercises, breathing in the body is transformative. It can take you into an altered state. And so you want to get out of the negative state you're in. And just back to calm. That's all the race you've got. You don't need to clear anything out. It's not a big job at the beginning. It is stopping the, the train yeah. and learning to be present. Because in presence, you then can have all the things will drop in the energy system. Then you can have some clarity. Because when your momentum is going, it's all still spinning around you. So being present. And breathing and stopping means those things that are important will stay up and those things which are just clouding you will just drop and you can have some clarity. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Makes sense? It does. No, it, I totally agree with, with that. I think that's place number one. That's the starter number one. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Just stop. Get breath. Get into the physical body. That's why exercise can be really good because it gets people out of their heads and into their bodies. Unless they put headphones in, and I see them in the gym, and they're not present when they're exercising as well. I'm like, get those things. <laughs> <laughs> Feel your body. Or cycling to work used to be an amazing thing for me when I used to live in London. It was like I'd leave the office and then just or the rehearsal room and just get on the bike, and I'd just be clear. It would clear me because. The physical body, the nervous system will just rewrite any of the emotion that's just been on. But meditation, but people get frustrated with meditation because they're so stressed and overwhelmed. So I get it. So stop and breathing, a breathing technique, even like 7 11, you know, breathe in for seven, out for 11. Make sure the parasympathetic nervous system switches on so that you've got the parachute system, I call it. You know, it's like the parasympathetic or the sympathetic, just two systems. Your sympathetic is going to be a stress state. We don't want any more of that. So you want to be producing more delta waves and theta waves and all the nice stuff. So you want to be dropping into calm, breath, 7-Eleven, in for seven, out for 11. Just simple, simple, simple things like that. You're smiling. You know all these things probably, but some listeners might be kind of, I don't know what you mean by breathing. I'm breathing anyway, no, but there I, are different ways of breathing. I love that. You know? That's a great takeaway for folks is just that, that the Seven Eleven breathing technique is something really practical they can use. So I know that you've got um, a retreat coming up and you've got, you know, I, I want to let people to know about what, how they can get in contact with you, uh, what you're up to. And um Yeah. Tell us what's going on and how people can get in touch with you. Well, the retreat I'm very, very excited about. It's nearly sold out, Joel. So I'm really thrilled about that. But um, I will be running another one. But there's a retreat on the 23rd of September. 
and I've chosen been really selfish and I've chosen the place that I would want it to be in yeah. I've designed it I thought wow if I could make a manifesting retreat you know that final stage of the process where you or people are struggling to know what they want this is this is the day masterclass I've been threatening to run for a very long time so I've been doing lots and lots of planning for that um how people would get in touch with me is the website diane beck coaching diane with one n dianebeckcoaching.com but yeah then you can hire me i come into companies now and i help align their staff or i do one-to-ones and then i do my retreat so there's plenty of different ways you can clear the dross and get present and get aligned and then get on with it fantastic so it's a goal achievement mastery is your one day retreat i love the way you yeah. designed it if you get you know <laughs> selfishly well, no but it's another way if you're gonna run a retreat what, what you know it's got to work for you that's alignment right you've got to work for you and yeah. it's amazing it's by it water it's in, the energy of the place is so beautiful it, it's the, exactly the place that i wanted it to be i love this hall it's this place called cape Thorn hall which is where they run the rewind festival north uh, they do, I think they do it every year and it's the most beautiful grounds and they've got bluebell woods and you know they've got you know, uh, deer I think they've definitely got like you know sheep and things so we've got the woods next to us and we've got this beautiful lodge on the lake it's practically onto, onto the lake and so we're going to be very taking a small group through the whole of the process clearing stuff out getting them to neutral getting them up to 540 frequency in theta state and and two hour meditations I've got planned to just drop them in. We've got the headphones and just to really guide people to bring in their future. It's had amazing results with one-to-one -one clients. I had a client recently, they manifested, the two of them came in for their company to change their company around, which has happened. And then they manifested their assistant. And one of them said, she's got really long, dark hair and I can really feel her hair. She's very bright. And all of these desc descriptions that she was, she was saying. They went, they went out. The next woman that walked in had long, dark hair, started complaining about her job. <laughs> Halfway through the process thinking, oh, my gosh, it's you. Um, and put them in touch and they've offered her a job, you know, <clears throat> clients meeting their partners the day after the process. I mean, it's just <clears throat> amazing. But you know how this works. Yeah. And when you're when you're on it and when your energy spinning to match what's in your field, to match what's what's coming up for you, not with the language that you were using uh, before but it was that's exactly it moving through you and feeling what's in your field what gives you joy when you align to it it's magnetic yeah it's really really exciting so the whole day is getting people to the state they probably wouldn't get to themselves until they get to a really you know practiced version of it that i'm obsessed with it i love it and i can't wait to do it i'm so looking forward to it fantastic so this is a retreat that's coming up um pretty soon after this episode goes live um so if someone's listening in the future is this something you're going to be doing sort of annual regular basis i you know it was going to be a one-off i was like i'm just going to do this one-off <laughs> version because <laughs> it's not the aligned life version because there's going to be the aligned life longer courses right to take people through what i do this is the this has been so popular that of course I'm gonna do definitely do one in December for to close out the year and to project the year ahead because it's powerful and people are really really liking it yeah I think almost certainly it's kind of like I say it's nearly sold out so I I think I could just bob another one in for December like late November or maybe early December so what I recommend is if you listen to this in the future hi future person um, <laughs> then go check out um, Diane's website which is diane beck coaching dot com yeah. yeah dot com fantastic and also you can hit her up on instagram and facebook get in the dms um again if it's, if it's like you listen to this and going oh my god that's like next week uh hit her up with a dm and see if she's uh got any space left which she might not by the way folks because she's nearly full already um, but also should be able to let you know. I will be doing I did another see one. on your website yeah. they can sign up to be notified so they can get on your email list. Um, yeah. Let them know if something's coming up. If, again, future person, take note. Uh, go sign up to um, Diane's email list. We're filming it too. I'm getting it professionally filmed too. So it's going to be a course online because I think if people can't, because I have clients in America and, and abroad who can't, come over sometimes so i was thinking this is a way for them to join the not live but join the meditations and it will go up as part of the course because that's a course platform too so at some stage we will be 
cutting it together and making it into a course as well because th- this one's definitely being professionally filmed fantastic yeah. that's yeah. that's a wonderful thing i guess with the industry you're in you know people uh who can film it which is good yeah he's a real find he's fab so he gets it completely and he's very quiet and he kind of stays out the way just <laughs> he doesn't question any of the really weirdness that goes on he loves it <laughs> yeah <laughs> no he loves it he's like really photographic so he's really into it but yeah that's that's going to be an option for people. So if people do miss it, there will be a, a way of accessing the material and the downloads. And there's a community on there as well that you can join in, but that will be all live when you go on and have a look Fantastic. at it. Fantastic. So go check out diamebeckcoaching.com um, whenever you're listening to this. If you're listening to this um, as it goes out, just at the end of August 2022, you may still have time to get on the one that we've been talking about. So go and check it out. That'd be Fantastic. Diane, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend a bit more time with you and just have a good chat, chew the fat. Um, And yeah, brilliant. Everyone, go check out Diane and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this show, I'd love you to do me a solid and tell someone about it. They can find us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts and most other podcast platforms. Plus, if you visit the website, www.babrillionhuman.com, You can share the show notes to social media and make my day. Also, make sure you hit that follow button. And if you haven't yet downloaded the MPA process sheet, head on over to joelyoungmpa.com and get your free copy today. Big love and see you next time.